The mission of Tomorrow's Rainbow is to take children who have experienced the death of somebody important to them and put them into an environment that is very conducive for children to want to be in so that they can be with their peers and remove the social isolation that happens when they have somebody important to them die. So we offer free grief support with miniature horse interactions and therapeutic play for any child that's experienced the death of a loved one. What happened was in 2000, my husband, my son and I were on vacation in Texas and we were involved in a head-on collision at 65 miles an hour. My husband was killed instantly and my son and I were hospitalized. And when we returned to Florida, we returned on my, my son's eighth birthday. The very next day was my husband's funeral and the very next day I was looking for grief support for my son and the only thing that was available was traditional therapy. And even though my son was getting the best therapy that money could buy, the social isolation was devastating. He didn't have a single friend that he could relate to. So I wanted to make sure that there could be a safe place for kids to come to be with their peers so that they could take their own personal grief journey in whatever way was meaningful to them. As soon as I got to Tomorrow's Rainbow and I joined the teen group, I was almost exactly the same age as everyone there. Um, there were girls my own age who had lost their fathers. There was a boy who lost his grandmother. And no one had really lost both of those at the same time like I had, but it felt like it could really open up to those people. Uh, I have four children. Uh, I have a son, 16, three girls, uh, 14, 12, and 9. They've been coming here uh, about two years. Uh, their mother passed away from ovarian cancer two and a half years ago. Um, I think it's benefited them because they see that there's other kids their own age that have lost a loved one and that this is really the only place that they can talk about their feelings. When we get to tomorrow's rainbow, usually everyone's arriving in little stair-step numbers within minutes of each other. Um, teen group usually meets at 5.30 in the evening every second Monday of the month and every fourth Monday of the month. So we'd come in and we'll, depending on the weather, come sit by the fire pit or go to the garage. And when we sit by the fire pit, everyone gathers around and once it seems like everyone's there, we, we're chatting amongst ourselves and then Abby will call for a circle and we will say our name, our age, who died that was important to us and how they died. And we listen to each other's stories and there's usually a question of the day and we answer it. Um, funnest one I remember is, if you were a crayon, what color would you be? and a lot of us had some really fun answers. After we've done our opening circle, the next thing that happens is they work with the horses. The working with the horses is very structured. They turn the horses out, they're responsible for cleaning their stall, grooming them from head to toe, and then after that they can continue working with the horses or the other animals if they'd like, or they can move on to the therapeutic play areas. Working in the play areas is very different. The children, the only rule in the play areas is that they stay safe, and they can go from area to area to area. I come because a few years ago when I was in first grade, my mom died of cancer, so I came here. I like most about this place is meeting new people that also have the same problem as you. I did not have anyone to talk to at the time. My mom said that I could talk to her, but I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I shared things with the animals such as like, oh I feel alone, oh no one knows what I'm going through. But then actually when when I heard everyone else talk about it a couple times, I realized that I wasn't the only one who was going through something like this. Um, when it initially happened, there was really no one to talk to except school guidance counselors. And when you're a teenager in a high school just starting out and you're a freshman and you've just lost two people very important to you. You're not trusting of the guidance counselors. You've just made friends, so you don't want to burden them with your thoughts. So you're, it's really up to talking to yourself. What's special about this organization is there's only people here that have had a loved one to them die, including the facilitators. When I came to Tomorrow's Rainbow, I felt warm, and I didn't have to do anything I didn't want to do. Around the garden, there are little plastic tulips, um, and Usually, if we feel like it, we'll come into the memory garden, we'll pick up a plastic tulip or we'll take one from the basket and we'll write on it with a little marker. And if we want to say hi to our loved one, we'll write a little message. Or if we want to write a prayer or whatever we really want to do on the flower, we can. Basically, from being in this program, they've learned to 
be more outgoing and talk about what's going on in their life. If, if there's a problem, there's people that they can talk to, whether it's, whether it's here or friends of the family. But, you know, we, they, they have made some very good friends here that they speak to online. So they're, they're always talking about their feelings. Um, we have had children that have come and have been so distraught in their grief and not felt like that there was anybody that could relate to them. And through being with the other children that know what it's like, they slowly come out of their shell. And usually what will happen is in our candle lighting ceremony, which we end each group with, is the first time where they are able to honor their loved one's memory by lighting a candle. I used to think that nobody was the same as me. I thought I was just the only person that had a loved one die. If this organization was not able to be here for me, I would probably be feeling more sad and alone than ever. When you're a kid and you're dealing with this, you don't want to go into some stranger's office, sit on their chair, and tell them about all your problems. Coming to Tomorrow's Rainbow, you get to see kids. You don't even think you're thinking about grief and you're getting over it. I, I think in terms of just getting the word out, um, it, it, it's, it's a great place for the kids to be. Um, it, it's even great for the parents because the parents can talk amongst themselves. The, the children can come to Tomorrow's Rainbow for as long as they like, and I say they can come until they're 99 years old. Um, the changes that we see in the children is at first they're very reserved, and they will sit back and listen to the other children's stories. Little by little, as they see that they're not alone and that they're not the only one that this happened to, they'll begin to share their story, and they'll tell their story as many times as they need to until they can incorporate it into their life story. So what we see is children that will walk in with the weight of the world on their shoulders, and they will leave as happy children that are joyful and we hear all the time that they go home and on the way home will share with their grown-up about their loved one, things that they remember, things that were happy, the friends that they made that they could relate to. So it really does take the weight of the world off their shoulders.